When I went to the foster home, we had gotten in touch with them before I got here. And I had I was learning English in school in Cuba in third grade. So yes. <laughs> we went to the same school. And I thought so I wrote to the girl, it was a family, it was an Irish family. And one cousin that I had in Stockton had gotten in touch with this family and they wanted to have a girl who stayed because they had another girl. And I, so that's how we got in. I got the foster home before I left. So I communicated with them by writing letters. I could write in English and I thought I knew a lot of English until I got here. And they thought I could because I could read it and write it. Well, when I got here and I heard them speak, it all came like one big, huge word, you know. It just wasn't like I did in school. You are reading a book. They didn't talk like that. They just take them all together. So it took me a while to, um, to uh, understand what they were saying. So my cousin came after a few months, and he says, well, how are you doing? Como ya sabes, Marisa? Yeah, I understand. Entiendo todo lo que me dicen. But there's one little word I don't understand. The guy is an English word. We got an he keeps saying, Andale, Andale. I don't understand. So I thought it was a Mexican word. Andale, Andale, Andale. You are Denver, Colorado, the orphanage there. And I have to go to the bathroom really bad. I didn't know that there were bathrooms on airplanes. That's a modern feature. I just had no knowledge of it. So I waited till we landed, and then they pushed me off to go to the orphanage, and then from there, they passed me off to a 12-year-old old boy who was going to show me around. And so I took my little Spanish, English, English, Spanish, 65-cent paperback dictionary, and I look at the word B-A-T-H-R-O-O-M. Bach. Wrong. <laughs> so I said to the little boy, Bach wrong, Bach wrong. <laughs> he looked at me like an idiot, and I thought, I'm with the one idiot in this place who doesn't understand English. So I got him on the shoulder and I said, Bach wrong, Bach wrong. <laughs> and then in the orphanage, he promptly led me to this place, and apparently the nuns had taught him that I was looking for was the restroom. <laughs> that day I learned my first two English words, bathroom and restroom. <laughs> this guy is pushing to do it in English. <laughs> anyway, in 1962 we landed in Lincoln, Nebraska. And the group that came in was a mixture. We have a black Cuban named Katanga. If somebody remembers from Matecumbe, we got a Chino Cubano named uh, Chan. We got all kinds of people. And we were next door to the governor's house. So the governor was like uh, around there by that tree. So at 3 o'clock in the morning, it starts snowing. And you know, when you get 25, 30 Cubans <laughs> together, so everybody starts, hey, it's snowing, it's snowing. And every came, everybody came out. I don't know where a bottle of 151 Bacardi <laughs> and a bottle of uh, regular Bacardi came out. And then Katanga goes, hey, let's have a conga line. And he pulled out his trumpet. Uh, another guy named Goyu, uh, we, told him, we call him Goyu because he was about, he's big like an orange. <laughs> anyway, we started the conga line. Two o'clock in the morning, Lincoln, Nebraska, 1962, it's a dry county. The farm boys down there they didn't know what the heck was going on. Anyway, we're doing the line, and I'm uh, too bad Poach is in here because he was there too. And we start, you know. El Carnaval de Oriente, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and uh, everybody has a nickname. So El Chino Chan comes over and says, Tiburón, and you know why. <laughs> <laughs> hey, take a look at that old man. So we look and say, 
Wow, that guy's crazy. Three o'clock in the morning, snow. Now take a look at the two guys with the smoky they had. <laughs> I wonder who the heck is this guy. <laughs> so he came in. He didn't identify himself. He asked us questions. There was a guy who was fluent in English that went to school, English American school in, uh, in Havana. We were down there. And, sit down, sit down. Somebody threw a blanket on it. But we keep looking at the guy with the hat, and they got, their face looked like they want to kill somebody. <laughs> anyway, being Cuban, the bottle went back <laughs> to the guy. <laughs> then the guy goes, don't you think it's a little late, but let me have a shot. It was Governor Morrison. Oh. He, died, he died about uh, 10 years ago. Uh -huh. He was the governor. So he was there for about 25 minutes. We told him the story and all that. And I mean, he keeps looking at all these Cubans because, you know, Chinese Cuban, a black Cuban, all kind of Cubans. They are blown, all kind. And this is a true story. Next day, the priest got a call at his office that the governor wanted to have uh, breakfast with him. And then in the papers, so we, they told us, start reading papers, so they say, rumor has it that the Governor Morrison uh, was part of the uh, conga line. A <laughs> 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 uh, Cristo Rey uh, uh, house, a uh, house for Cuban boys. <laughs> <laughs> so next day, the next day, the priest came in, and we were out, out, out of circulation for three weeks. <laughs> Uno a Medellín, Colombia. De eso no puedo hablar, porque lloro y yo para llorar eso es buenísimo. <laughs> Pero llegamos muy temprano a Miami el 8 de junio del año 61 y visitamos primero a Kendall. Fue impresionante para este niño de 11 años ves como las niñitas se agarraban la mano y caminaban por Kendall. Después llegamos a Florida City, nos tocó próximo. El primer día, todo el mundo masticando chicle. La segunda visita, todo el mundo con un radiecito. Y después nos tocó más de cumbre, donde los niños de 13 en adelante los enviaban a los felinatos. Voy a dejar eso a un lado y les voy a contar algo cómico de cubanitos que tenía que salir, sacar a todos esos niños de visita el viernes y devolverlo el domingo. Nunca se ha hablado. Por eso quise hablar hoy. De lo triste. Que era ver a estos niños. Pero del lado allá de la cerda, en Jayalía, me tocó vender aguacate puerta a puerta. <risa> Primero vendí donas a los 11 años, pero nadie me compraba. Porque para los Yankee Open Containers, como que no. E entonces le tumbé todos los aguacates en la mata y, me, y vendí aguacate puerta en puerta en Jayalía. Me fue difícil. Había un calor tremendo y me da peor. Llegué a un, a un marquesito cubano frente al hipódromo. Miré el precio de los aguacates y le puse mitad de precio a los míos. <risa> Salió el dueño y me dijo, fíjate bien, allí, fíjate bien, te voy a comprar todos los aguacates. <risa> Pero no te quiero ver más aquí, más nunca. 